there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing some Dollar Tree DIYing with me today? Well, come on in. Let's get started. What do I have going on for you for today? How about some random budget-friendly Dollar Tree DIYs? These are quick, they're easy, they're budget-friendly, and these are DIYs that you can do just about any time of year because you're gonna be able to find these items at Dollar Tree all year round. I can't wait to show you what I have in store for you for today, so guess what I'm gonna do? I am. I'm gonna quit my gabbing, let's jump into it, and let's do some Dollar Tree DIYing on a budget. Because why not? because that's what we do here. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll wanna stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. So yeah, here's a better look at Crafter Square Air Dry Clay. This is a terracotta color, but that's okay. I think it's just gonna add more to the rustic feel and look of these tags that I'm going for. This clay is a bit wet, Wetter than I would say some of the air dry clay that you would get at Michael's or Joann's, but it's okay. It's going to be a little messy. Our hands are going to get dirty, but why not? That's what soap and water's for, right? Taking a rolling pin, I'm going to go ahead and roll out the clay. I'm not using a lot, and I am doing this on top of one of Dollar Tree's cutting mats. You can find these in the kitchen section of Dollar Tree. They come in a two-pack. These are great. I buy them all the time because it really does save your workspace and it's easy cleanup. We're gonna need some water for this because this clay does crack a bit. I found that if you put just a bit of water on top of it, it takes the cracks away and smooths it out quite a bit. Now to cut and shape my tag, I'm not using anything fancy. I'm going with the ruler because it's what I have on hand. There's a ton of different things that you can do to cut your clay. Don't go out spending any money for this and getting any special tools because I'm sure you've got something around your house that'll work. If you find that your edges are a bit jagged, rough, uneven, just take and put some water on your finger, rub over the clay, and it's going to smooth them out. The tag I'm making today is just a simple tag, one of those paper tags that's, I guess, sort of a rectangle shape, but one of the ends kind of tapers in. And so to do that, if you just cut a rectangle, now it doesn't have to be perfect. I can't emphasize that enough. Because these clay tags are supposed to be rustic, they're supposed to be uneven, then taking on one end with your ruler, if you just taper in and cut off that corner point, you're gonna get the perfect shape tag. And this is the one I'm going for. You can do this on any size magnitude that you want. I just wanted to go with a smaller size. To lift these up off of the mat, if you take just one of Dollar Tree's putty knives, you can scrape it right up. And again, putting some water on your fingertips, you can smooth out any of those edges that aren't as smooth as you want them to be. Get rid of some of that excess clay. Yep, I'm going to use a straw for the hole. Why not? It's what I have on hand and it'll work. It'll be perfect. A little trick that I did learn though is if you wet the straw before you put it in the clay and once you put it in the clay, if you kind of twist, it smooths out those edges and the clay piece comes right out. Now to put some lettering on these tags, I'm going to use these stamps that I got in subscriber mail last month and I thought it would be fun just to put XOXO on this tag. What's great about this is you can put anything on this. You can put somebody's name, you can put any word you want, endless possibilities, and you're gonna be able to make so many tags out of one block of Dollar Tree's air dry clay, or any clay for that matter. If you can't get it at Dollar Tree, you can find air dry clay by Crayola. You can get it at Walmart, Michaels, Joann's. It's not very expensive at all. Look at how cool that is. I'm going to place my tags on some wax paper and I'm going to let them dry overnight, hence air dry. Do not put these in the oven to try and speed up the drying process because it will crack the clay. When I was making these tags, I was 
really thinking, what do I have around the house that would work for different shapes? Definitely cookie cutters are a given. If you've got some cool shaped cookie cutters, you could use those. But I really wanted to stay with some of the basic shapes. And so I found this lid that was on one of my seasoning containers. This is gonna work perfect. It's the perfect size, it's the perfect shape, and it's gonna give us a circle. And so again with the straw, I went ahead and wet the straw and once I insert it into the clay just by twisting it, once you pull it out, you've got a nice clean hole in your clay almost tag. These stamps here are perfect for this. I was so happy that I had these in my stash from that subscriber mail. You can get these at Joann's, Michael's, Hobby Lobby, even Walmart. I've seen them at Walmart for a dollar for the full pack. At Michael's, I think you're gonna pay $2. They're usually in those crafting dollar bins that run from a dollar to $5 there at the store. They're a handy little stamp. I think it's fun to maybe put a name on this one. I'm putting my name. You can put a word like faith or love on them. Endless possibilities. I let these dry overnight. Look at how cool these turned out. I love how imperfect they are. I think it adds so much character to them. It gives them that rustic feel that I absolutely love. I think that these are so fun. They were super easy to do, and there are so many things you can do with them. If you don't like the terracotta color of these, that clay color, take some paint and give them a quick coat of paint. I'm using some of Waverly's Cashew. I thought that this would be the perfect color to them because once I add the paint to them, I'm gonna go ahead and distress them and give them that cream colored clay tag feel. You know me, I need to add age to these. So I'm gonna do that using Tim Holtz Distress Ink in the color of Walnut Stain. If you take a paintbrush and you just run it along the ink pad itself, then you can easily just distress whatever it is that you're distressing. Now, when you use this ink on paint, on a chalk paint, it does come out a bit lighter. So if you want the ink to be more pigmented, you could either run your tag along the ink pad itself or just do a couple of coats of the ink with your paintbrush. When I was adding the twine to the tags, I started off with one strand, but it just seemed too thin. It didn't feel substantial enough, I guess. And so I went ahead and did it two strands thick and that seemed to do the trick. Once I fed it through the hole, when I tie my knot, I like to tie my knot and pull it straight down to the top of the tag. And it leaves that extra twine there on the end to attach it to whatever it is that you're gonna attach it to. Can I just tell you how much I love these tags? These are the best. They were super easy to do. I love the way they look painted or not painted. I think either way they totally look rustic. It just gives them two totally different rustic looks, I guess. And I think that these are a piece that when you attach them to a gift, even a mason jar or something, oh my word, the person who receives it is gonna love it. They are not gonna throw this tag away. They're probably gonna use it as a keychain. Hey, that's a good idea. Make them a keychain. But they might break because they're clay. Maybe they won't. I don't know, we could try it, but what a fun piece. They'd make cute magnets. Once I made those four tags, I wasn't done playing in the clay. I wanted to make more tags. I wanted to get a stash going so I could add these to all of my gifts for say Mother's Day, Easter, Father's Day, you name it. So I went into the kitchen. I was looking around to see what other shapes I could make these tags out of, what fun shapes I could make these tags out of. When I found this biscuit cutter, how fun is that? I say that you pick up some clay, whether it be at the Dollar Tree or at your local craft store and you make some of these tags because they are quick, easy, they're budget friendly. This could be a craft project that you do with the kids and they could make tags for their moms and dads for Mother's Day and Father's Day. Get creative and have some fun.
Oh my word, this is a fun one. So I'm gonna start off by preheating my oven to 350 because this is the method in which I like to use to melt down my candles. I've got six candles here that I've put on a cookie sheet on the lower rack of the oven. After exactly 20 minutes, I check my wax and you can see that my candles are completely melted down. To take my candles out of the oven, I will be using my silicone oven mitt that you can find at the Dollar Tree. These are amazing. Then I'm gonna remove all of the wicks from my candles because I'm going to reuse these. See, you're gonna save money because you don't have to buy wicks and you can reuse the wicks that are in these candles. For this candle DIY, I will be using these clear glass bowls that you can also get from the Dollar Tree. These are a nice, thick glass bowl. Then I'm gonna take my wicks that I removed from the candles, and using just a bit of hot glue, I'm gonna place some hot glue on the bottom of the wick on this metal tab here, and I'm gonna place it in the bottom of my bowl. Now, you can make these bowls a two wick or a three wick candle it really is your choice but since i'm melting down six candles and i have the six wicks i decided to go with three wicks per bowl just by evenly placing the wicks on the bottom of the bowl just like you see here now taking some of this luminescence vanilla fragrance oil that you can get from the dollar tree they have several different scents I'm gonna use one bottle for three cylinder candles here. Inside, you can see that there's this plastic insert. You can easily remove that and it makes it a lot easier to pour the oil out into the wax and I'm just gonna eyeball it. Once I've got it poured, I'm gonna go ahead and take my wax and pour it into my bowl. Now, each of these bowls takes two of the cylinder candles. I know that I showed six candles in the oven, but that's because I'm also making some separate ones that I'm gonna use on my wax warmer. And so, like I said, I'm just gonna pour two of the cylinders into my bowl, and this is gonna be the perfect amount. Then taking some skewers, I'm just gonna kinda lay my wicks over the skewers to keep them in place. You're also gonna need some teaspoons and you can get this two pack also from the Dollar Tree as well. And I'm gonna place one of them right in between two of the wicks and I'm gonna place just a bit of hot glue on the edge of the bowl just to keep the spoon in place to keep it from sliding. Once your candle has solidified, you can go ahead and remove your skewers and you can see that the wicks stayed in place perfectly and I'm gonna go ahead and trim down my wicks. I'm not gonna throw these away. I'm gonna leave about an inch in the bowl. Now I'm gonna take some cereal. These are two packs that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. If you have cereal on hand, you're ahead of the game. For those of you who don't eat cereal, you can pick up these packs from the Dollar Tree. Then using my heat gun, you can also use a blow dryer if you want, but this tool, it has come in pretty handy for me. I found it at Joann's for $19.99 and using a 50% off coupon, I got it for like $10. And it's a tool that I use quite often in a few DIYs. I'm gonna use this just to melt the top layer of my candle. Now I will tell you that once your candle solidifies, if you have sink holes, you can very easily take your blow dryer or your heat tool and melt down that top layer of wax until those sink holes get filled in. I didn't have a problem with sink holes this time with these candles, so like I said, I'm just gonna take and melt down this top layer and I'm gonna place my cereal on the top layer. Now I'm doing this because I want the wax to melt so when I place the cereal in the candle, it sticks and it doesn't move around. And so you, you wanna melt it down enough that the cereal actually gets into the wax but you don't wanna melt it down enough where there's puddles. For these candles, you can really use any cereal you want. I went with the Captain Crunch because it had such bright, fun colors, and this is gonna go in Allie's room. It's just gonna be a decor piece. It's not gonna be something that she burns. We don't really burn candles anyway. We usually use one of those melters that you plug in and you can place the jar candle on top, but this really is just for looks. I think it's a fun, cute candle that serves as a fun decor piece. Dollar Tree has so many different bags of cereal. I just did one the other day using Cinnamon Toast Crunch and it came out stinking adorable. And so you just wanna place your cereal 
on top of your wax and when you do this you'll see at the end that I did move the cereal a good distance away from the wick so if you do want to burn these you can and you don't have to fear that the cereal is going to catch on fire you just kind of want to keep it away from the wick I don't worry too much about the glass getting too hot in past videos I've had people ask me don't you worry about the glass breaking is the glass gonna get too hot and really when you think about it when you're burning a regular candle the outside of the glass doesn't get hot to touch you can still after a few hours of the candle burning take your candle and move it by hand and not burn your hand and so because this is a thicker glass I'm not worried about it and like I said I think it's gonna serve more as a decor piece but if you really wanted to burn it you can because it's gonna smell great these are gonna smell like vanilla and so for the second candle I'm going with Fruit Loops because I think it's just such a fun cereal and you can see that these are just quick fun they're budget friendly oh my word I can't help it I have to say it how stinking cute are these candles that look like cereal bowls I absolutely love these and what I love even more is that I didn't have to pay $29.99 for them with a little bit of DIYing and some items from the Dollar Tree I was able to make these and I'm gonna say that I made two of them for under the price of $10 I think it was about $8 in total and the outcome of these is adorable Alrighty, so getting started, I am going to be using one of these ice bucket containers that you can find at Dollar Tree. This can be found in the party section that has all the really cool plastic, clear plastic containers. And so I really just picked this because of its shape. I couldn't find any gardening pots at Dollar Tree. So if I could have found those, I would have gotten those. But this is going to work because really all we need is the shape. Surprise, surprise. I'll also be using some decorative nautical rope. I'm gonna start off at the bottom and I am going to hot glue this rope around this entire ice bucket. Now, I know, what's new about that? We see people and creators wrap rope around all sorts of containers. Wait for it, okay? Because it's what I'm gonna turn this into that I think you're absolutely gonna love. Did I tell you that this DIY is so quick and easy and budget friendly? And the outcome is so stinking cute, you're gonna love it. Once you just took the 20 minutes it's gonna take you to cover this bucket with rope, once you get to what would be the bottom of the bucket, but really it's the top because the top is face down, you're not gonna cut off any rope that's left over. You're gonna keep it attached because you're gonna take a separate piece, whatever measurement you want it to be. I've chosen a piece that's about eight inches you're gonna hot glue it to the center of the bottom of the bucket here just like so. Doesn't have to be fancy. Don't worry about the way it looks. Wait for it. Some of you probably already know where I'm going with this. Once you've got what we're gonna call the handle glued on, we're gonna take that rope that we didn't cut off and we're gonna continue to glue the rope together. Although there is no bucket to continue gluing it to, we're gonna glue it to the inside edge of the rope and as we do that you're gonna see that it's gonna get smaller and smaller because you're gluing it to the inside edge of the rope if you're gluing it to the top of the rope you're just gonna build your rope up and that's not what we want to do we want to kind of build it to a cone closing it off yep I'm making a beehive this is so quick and easy the outcome is so rustic I can hardly stand it and it's gonna cost you under five dollars to do and I gotta tell you for those of you who made the comment on my lemon tray that you wished I would have done a bee theme I couldn't wait for today's DIY to come because I knew it was one you were gonna love I'm gonna take some extra rope and just by gluing it in a circle in the front of this beehive I'm making the opening to our beehive so the bees can go in and out and make some honey because right they're really gonna do it with this using some of apple barrels black paint I'm gonna paint the inside of this circle you don't have to use apple barrel you can use any black paint that you want that's just the black paint I'm using and by painting the inside of this circle it's gonna give us the illusion that it's a hole for the bees to enter into it's an illusion realism that's what we're going for with DIYs aren't we I found this two pack of bees at, you guessed it, the Dollar Tree. 
And guess what? It was the only two pack I found. I wish I could have found more. I wish I could tell you, hey guys, go to your Dollar Tree. You're gonna find these. Chances are you're probably not. And I think I was lucky that I found these, but they weren't quite the right colors for me. So I'm gonna take some Apple Barrels, some kind of yellow paint, not sure what one it is because I didn't show it on here. And I'm doing this voiceover after the fact. Just pick out a nice bright yellow if you want or keep the bees the same color that they are. I'm gonna give them a good coating of yellow because I want bumblebees. I want yellow and black bumblebees on this cool rustic beehive. And to these bees, I am going to add some black stripes to the already existing black stripes that are bleeding through that bright yellow paint that we painted them with. This one is the yellow bee and you can see that the orange one still needed another coat or two. So I went ahead and slapped on another couple coats and while it was wet, I added the black stripes onto that one too because why? I am impatient. I don't like waiting for things to dry because why? I want to see the outcome of my DIY. That's why. Using some hot glue, I'm going to glue these little fellows onto their new home which is this cool rustic beehive that I've made just for them, just for these bees here. Now honestly, I would have liked to have found a couple more packs of these because I feel like this beehive needed maybe three or four bees. but. I couldn't find them, so I'm going to keep my eye open for them. And as I was looking at it, I was a little bit bummed because I'm feeling like this is missing something. It needs more. What can I put on this just to kind of finish it off and give it more of a rustic feel, give it more of that cute feel? Yeah, twine! It needed some of my twine flowers with a yellow button and this was the perfect finishing touch to this beehive. I couldn't be happier with it. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, okay, self, you don't need more bees for this. This is perfect. I love it. Alrighty, so getting started, I'll be using two packs of these foam dice. You can find these in the toy section of the Dollar Tree. And I'll also be using a couple of wood skewers. You can also get these at the Dollar Tree in the kitchen section. I'm gonna break two of them in half. Then I'm just gonna kind of puncture the foam dice right in the center on one side. It doesn't matter which side because this is gonna make it a bit easier to paint these. You can hold on to the skewer and you're able to paint all the sides of the dice without having to set it down, flip it over, and let it dry. I started off by painting them with some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of white, and this is just way too stark. I knew it as soon as I started. But because I didn't want to rinse it off, I just figured, you know what, I'm going to finish this dice and I will repaint it using some of Waverly's chalk paint in the color of Cashew, my new favorite color. Absolutely love this color. It's a good blend of a cream and a beige. And so I really like it. I feel like it's really easy to incorporate into a farmhouse DIY. And so, like I said, I'm going to give all four of these dice a good coating of this paint. Kind of a trick of the trade is once you paint them, if you just go ahead and stick them in a piece of floral foam or foam, then you can let them dry and they're gonna dry flawlessly. Now I'm gonna take some black acrylic paint and a sponge dabber. I found that using the sponge dabber to outline the edges of the dice was a lot easier than trying to use a paintbrush. If you have a makeup sponge, that will probably work better too but I don't suggest using a paintbrush because I tried and it just was kind of a hideous job. It just took forever, my lines weren't as straight, and when I used a sponge dabber, it just kind of went on nicely. Now when you're applying these black lines and outlining the dice, you're not looking for perfection. You don't need your lines to be perfect, but if you do happen to mess up a bit, just go back in with a paintbrush with your cashew paint and kind of touch up wherever you feel you need to touch it up. Once your dice are good and dry, you're going to go ahead and remove the skewers. Now don't worry too much about the hole at the bottom because it's not going to show. We're going to cover that up. The sticker letters that I'll be using for today's DIY are these by Remarks. There's 702 in this pack, eight pages, $7.99. I didn't pay that at Hobby Lobby, 50% off, I paid $4. I'm gonna use these stickers to spell out the words live, love, life, and hope. And so there's gonna be plenty of stickers to do that. 
for this DIY and I'm going to have plenty left over for upcoming DIYs as well. So it was worth the investment to pay the $4 for these stickers. This is a great alternative if you don't have a Cricut or you don't want to stencil paint your letters on, you can. I personally just like to use these type of stickers because they are budget friendly. Once I had all these done, I really realized that I didn't like the lowercase letters. So later on, you're gonna see that I did remove the lowercase letters and decided to go with all uppercase, but you see the idea of what I did here. I'm gonna take five of the beads and using some pipe cleaner, I'm gonna put the pipe cleaner in the hole of the bead and it's gonna make it a lot easier to paint these. And again, once I've got them painted, I'm gonna just stick them in my foam to let them dry. And again, once the beads are good and dry, using some hot glue, I'm gonna place one bead on the side where the hole is from the skewer. Once I've got that one placed, I'm gonna go ahead and place some hot glue on the other side of the bead and kinda just stick the dice together with the bead in the middle. And I'm gonna do that two more times, separating each of the dice with one of the beads. Now to finish this piece off, I really didn't want to finish the ends off with just a bead. I felt like that was just a bit too plain. And so taking some of Crafter Square Twine, I have plenty of that on hand, I'm going to make a couple of tassels. Tassels are pretty easy to make and it's the perfect way to incorporate some twine into this DIY. To make a tassel, you're just going to kind of figure out the length of the tassel that you want and it's gonna be folded in half. So you're gonna wanna times it by two or make it double the size. Once you've got the size you want, you're gonna take a piece of twine, tie it in the middle of your twine, then kind of fold your twine over that. Once you've got it folded over, you're gonna take another piece of twine and kind of wrap it around, keeping your twine folded in half. And so you're not gonna to wanna to cut any of your twine off yet. The piece of twine that's at the top that we actually tied the twine together with, you wanna leave it because we're gonna use that to feed it through the bead here. Once you've got it fed through the bead, just place a bit of hot glue right in the hole of the bead to hold it into place. Then you can go ahead and cut off the excess twine. And there we've just made a tassel attached to a bead. Pretty simple to do and very budget friendly. Look at how cute that is. Then just go ahead and hot glue these to the end of each of the dice there. And I think that this is the perfect finishing touch. I am showing here that I still have the smaller letters, but you'll see here in the pictures that I did go with the larger letters. It looks a lot better. I think that it goes better with the size of the dice. And I just love that there's a different word on each side. So depending on how you're feeling is going to be the word that you have showing for that day. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? Well, it's going out to Anna Walker, who's bringing to us her recreation of my DIY home wall decor plaque. Anna, I am loving your spin and your twist on it. Thank you so much for sharing your recreation with us today. Which one was your favorite? I don't know that I can choose one. I hope you all enjoyed today's Dollar Tree budget-friendly, quick and easy DIYs. If you're looking for more DIY inspiration, well, guess what? You can click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please, because I am. Bye for now, everybody.